Okay, so after last week, I thought that I could chill with y'all and like talk a little bit about how I generate ideas. You know, less less intense topic. Okay, uh, this tends to be one of those like interesting topics for writers and artists, and it's kind of because it like ends up different for each and every one of the writers and artists who talk about it. So like. It's not really so much an advice video, but more like, hey, this is the stuff that works for me. Maybe it'll work for you. Doesn't really matter. It's my process. Ha ha. I, I don't know why I'm sounding like <laughs> it's a tired week. Anyways, let's let's get into this. Let's not ramble, okay? So when I go about making ideas, because I am a self-published writer, I am not really built on name recognition. You're not going to say, oh, this is by Bones. I'm going to read the next one. It's like, oh, I don't know who you are. What's this book about? I always have this little little nasty thought in my head when I'm when I'm thinking of any kind of idea. And that's the, the nasty thought of marketability. Um, it's always popping up when I'm brainstorming. I'm not really sure if this is good or bad. I say it's nasty, but it might not be, honestly. Um, but like, either way, I've developed a tendency to think in terms of demographics. Like, like when I sit down to like force myself to brainstorm and think out of ideas, not just like my ideas are inherently like always thinking of demographics, you know, I hope that makes sense. But when I sit down, I think about this stuff. Um, I've heard a lot of advice about not doing this and just kind of creating whatever your heart desires. But I can't really separate the two. Um, when I sit down to think, I'm it's kind of like I'm taking a seat in a room full of jigsaw puzzles and they're all messed up together. And when I want to think out an idea, I need to know which puzzle I'm creating so that I can get the right pieces and put that specific one together or like one that at least kind of looks like this. So yeah, in order to get anywhere, I just I need to know what direction I'm headed in and, and what I'm looking to do. So so typically when I sit down to make ideas, I aim for a female audience with um the age range of like early teens to mid 20s, sort of the same demographic that's going to go to an anime convention <laughs> because that's where I tend to sell. And that demographic is also easy to reach online, especially the mid 20s side of it. Um, like, obviously, there's going to be exceptions and there's going to be some guys and there's going to be some older people and some younger people who like my work too. And that's fine especially since I'm a guy and I'm only really writing to this demographic because I like the things that are targeted at that demographic anyways. Otherwise, I wouldn't be after that. I'd probably be after like a male demographic. But I but I like the things like the, the Sailor Moons and the Steven Universes. Well, I guess that's more... Tar you know what? I am digressing hard here, but, but you get what I'm trying to say, I hope, maybe. I don't know. I don't know you. Either way, what, what I really tend to avoid whenever I'm thinking about ideas is I think <laughs> I avoid older demographics and I avoid younger, like, middle school demographics. Because, for one, I'm never going to reach an older demographic because they tend to, like, not be on the internet as much and they go in places that I don't really go and for the younger demographic even though they are on the internet you sort of need to get the books into the hands of teachers and parents and librarians and that's not something I'm capable of so I just I target something that I can actually sell so yeah I I want to just say all this because I feel like I'd be lying if I if I told you like I was all artsy fartsy all the time um, during my idea process, but I'm not. I'm I I do get a little markety and a little like money thinky when I do these things. But in the end, like I want to make something that's going to appeal to somebody that I can sell to because I need to make money. And if I if my goal wasn't to make money and it was just to make things that make my heart sing, I do that. But thankfully, I can kind of do both. So I I I tend to think like, why not? try for both you know so like after I get that sort of like basic like roadmap out of the way that's where my process sort of turns to pitching as like I start thinking of things in terms of pitch again 
makes my work sound really soulless and and sad and miserable but i i swear i it's not always like this but i i like to think of these high concept ideas first that are really marketable and really fun and enjoyable at the same time just something that's easier to sell down down the line so like what do i mean by like high concept idea it basically means like an easily explainable story that sounds really cool at a glance. Um, like for Pretty Mouth. Pretty Mouth is about a cursed boy and what was supposed to be a one night stand with a monster. Uh, Magpie is a lesbian love triangle with an elder god. And Scourge Nine Point is a book about cat knights. Who doesn't love cat knights? You know, who doesn't want to read that stuff? That's the high concept kind of thing that I think of first before I develop anything. These days, like, my first point of contact with any story is really just the concept. Because there's so much you can do with the concept and so so many ways to branch out with it. You're not really stuck in any sense, but it just makes it so much easier to pitch down the line. So I think of a concept and then I flesh out all the other things depending on how it, how my feelings are, you know? Honestly, when, I, when I'm trying to describe concepts, I can't really think of, like, how you come up with them. They just kind of come up in my head. What would be some advice. If you're looking to make a high concept thing, like this isn't always the case, this is a good idea, work in the framework of noun, verbs, a noun. So like off the top of my head, um, uh, college students adopt a baby dragon. What else? Uh, German shepherd kidnapped by aliens. Uh, dad marries a necromancer. Grade schoolers befriends the lord of darkness you know those are high concept things that are pretty easy to pitch pretty fun interesting and you just go with them and you can do anything you want with all of these honestly i could go on and on with these they're really easy they're basically just prompts and there's just so much you can do with them and starting with the framework of like what demographic i'm gonna hit what is the high concept it just takes away a lot of stress when it comes down to like actually sitting and being like Will anyone want to read this? Of course they will, because it already has this nice little marketing package for me to work within. Like, if you have trouble with these, you can also use prompt generators and work off of other people's prompts. That's fine. I don't tend to do that because if I make the prompt, I'm like inherently more invested in it, I find. And I, I feel a little less dirty because I'm at least coming up with my own idea, but like... I actually don't think there's anything actually wrong with using story prompts. It's perfectly fine. It's just a weird hang up I have. I would never place this weird expectation on other people. Sometimes I will brainstorm in other ways. I'll ignore all this marketing trash that's in my head. And sometimes I'll just like free write, go where the words take me, or like I'll start with like a character I like. But usually these stories, like they end up really broken and really like lacking in plot and they need so much retooling that it just doesn't end up being worth it for me and they become really hard things to sell that don't really have this thing in mind so I I'll do those sometimes for short stories but usually I just kind of avoid that uh, the only time I really actually will seek out free writing is if I'm having a really like depressed phase or I'm just really struggling with writer's block and like everything sounds awful to me. Sometimes it just helps to just write things out of my head and be like, wow, you don't suck. And and that sometimes spins out into like an awesome story. And some of my favorite stories have come that way. But it's just not a way I tend to brainstorm anymore, unfortunately. But OK, let's get into something that makes me like see them a little less like a, a marketing robot like once I'm aware of the demographic I have the pitch then I I do get really airy fairy with like thinking things out and exploring because I just have the framework there and it's and, and then the rest can be whatever it wants to be you know when I'm thinking out ideas this way I like to research lots of things. I like to research kind of hyper specific topics and unique ideas that might not necessarily have gotten a fantasy spin yet. Like a lot of my ideas for stories come from browsing the nonfiction section and kind of just taking a book off the shelf that looks interesting to me. And then I kind of 
learn something and start like spinning it into like a kind of fantasy thing like i'm one of those people that thinks reality is like usually stranger than fiction so if i really want to make something strange i have to find a strange reality and make it an even stranger fiction which i think is why a lot of people tend to think that my stories are really weird (laughs) so i guess i guess they might be a little weird um you know there's usually something like interesting about the world that like i can latch on to and convert into fantasy like for scourge of nine point i read a lot of lore about cats like the nine souls things and like i sort of understood where that came from which cats are considered lucky which cats are considered unlucky um and then kind of like built a system on that because I was like oh luck is an interesting point this nine souls thing is also interesting and then I applied that to a lot of research I did on the genetics of cat fur and it always sounds like way hoity-toity when I say that but I really don't know tons about genetics okay like I know like basic high school level genetic stuff and I've read a bunch of books from like on cat breeding and 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 that's it that Ursula always makes it sound like really intense like I did intense research but I I am not an expert in any sense and I will bow to the experts but either way I researched tons about that and I learned a lot of interesting stuff that I could apply to make a very unique system of magic and um, I did the same thing with researching all the Canadian wildlife to create different, like, you know, I, I've talked about this in my world building stuff, but that's kind of how I get ideas for um, larger picture things like magic, the world that characters live in, and the types of characters that live in that world. Um, I'll do this for urban fantasy too, because I think there's like much more interesting approaches you can do for your urban fantasy um just by looking at like urban mythology or just you know things you might not pay attention to in urban societies like you know like the werewolf thing you know wouldn't it make more sense if there was like were coyotes oh my god i'm excited about that just thinking about that like because like there's all these like urban animals like when see i am very obsessed with animals i am off track i am inspiring myself to make things i'm gonna stop Um, another thing I do tend to do is, like, I look at these topics that I really like, like, animals, and I'm like, maybe don't base your story off of that, because that is something you always base your story off of. Let's look into something interesting. And I'm like, okay, what about birds? And the other part of me is like, birds are animals, Bones. I'm like, yeah, but I haven't done anything with birds yet, so it doesn't count. And then we go on from there. Um, what was I saying? Uh, right, creating ideas. So that's how I make the world building stuff. As you can tell, it's probably one of my favorite stuff to do. Uh, for, let's move on to, like, other things, like building characters. For, for uh, character ideas and, like, emotional ideas, I tend to take from my own life, um, I tend to be, like, I tend to think, like, what is some concept I'm struggling with? And, like, um, how can I use writing to, to explore this topic and come to like some greater understanding on it oh my god that sounds so awful um yeah i i've (laughs) i literally use my um writing as therapy where i'm just like okay so so like how do you deal with the fact that we're all gonna die someday how do you deal with loneliness what is depression and then i like will create characters and ideas based on that that's that's all right. That makes me feel like um, whenever I write, I end up f- like, okay, so when I was a kid, I used to think that the people that like you do like those English assignments, right? And it'd be like, why did the writer make the curtains red? And you'd be like, well, maybe the writer just made them red because. But now I'm the person that's like, no, I made those curtains red because it represents <laughs> the trauma of my soul or something. And geez, it was obvious from the beginning. Yeah, I've become one of those people that, like, everyone will hate. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, um, so when I when I think of those emotional things, I definitely like to think about, like, what is something I'm struggling with? What is something, like, I can give a unique perspective on? Um, when I was a kid, I didn't really have a u- unique perspective on anything, but now I, now I have some things I want to say. It's usually just 
trite stuff and it kind of boils down to like um, you need friendship and love in your life and all these other things are like working hard is kind of silly um, what am I saying that's like the whole I told you this would be chill here um, other things I do that are let's that are less um, fruity let's say like that are less fruity is um, I'll look into like listening to music listening to music is like pretty common it's it's a good way to get sort of an emotional sense of a character. You can kind of like do the musical, the you can kind of do the um, making a music video in your head thing. I know a lot of people do this and we all think we're special for doing it, but we're not because we all do it. Um, especially if you're kind of like a visually focused person. Of course, you're going to think about visuals. What else are you going to think about? Okay, well, sorry. Um, yeah, so I do like the music video in my head thing and I start like, associating different songs with different characters it gets pretty bad for me where I just if I can't associate a song to a character even slightly I'm like something is wrong with this character if this character is so devoid of personality that they can't re relate to like any song that I listen to how are they even the person and like sometimes I'll just like break a character at that point and like completely retool them to match some other song or genre or music just so that I feel like they have a lot more personality and I think about them more this is another thing that I don't know is if it's good or bad at all no clue I just do it and it makes me happy so I'll just keep doing it and then there's sometimes where like I can't come up with anything. Like I've listened to every music in existence, definitely one hundred percent. I have one hundred percent listened to all music that exists. There's no character that matches it. Everything is ridiculous, and I can't get anything done. Um, in those cases, I need to go on an adventure. I need to leave my house. I need to get out of the same old, same old, so that I can write something that isn't the same old, same old. I find that going somewhere I don't usually go is enough to kind of like a rat rattle ideas in my brain and I usually come up with something even if it's only tangentially related to something I've seen and that's fine you know as long as I get ideas it's fine and if I can't really go on an adventure like I can't leave the house it sucks or like I don't have money to go on something I don't have the money to go somewhere exciting. I'll like put on a movie or watch watch TV, read a book. Um, for me, I don't read a lot and I don't watch a lot of stuff. I tend to be a very fidgety person who can't sit down and pay attention for a very long time. So, so yeah, I, if I actually force myself to sit and watch something, it's usually enough to get me hype and excited about making ideas. Um, and it can be a good substitute for going on a walk, going somewhere exciting. Not my preferred option, but something I definitely try and do more often. Um, yeah. Basically, this all boils down to, like, the idea process is really hard to streamline. Um, half the time, I'm needing to, like, force myself to, like, generate ideas and, and work on my plots and write and do all that stuff. And then the other half of the time, I actually do need a break and my brain needs a rest and I need to, like, have some lay down, regenerate my thoughts, um, just relax and think time. And, like, the worst part of it is I never know which side I'm on. Do I need to relax or do I need to force myself? And it's such a struggle, guys. It's such a struggle. I'm, I don't even know. So that's, that's basically the breakdown of my writing process. Um, if you wonder why the volume is always changing, it's because I'm like wiggling back and forth as I talk. So last video, okay, I, I will definitely do a 102 on plotting. I, I will 100% be doing a 102. Don't quote me on it, but I 100% will be in the future at some time. And I'll go over different types of plots because some people were asked, some people, someone asked about like, I understand all this, but how do you do a less epic one? And I'm like, oh yeah, I could do that. I could talk a little bit about how the plot structure works for like horror, romance, drama, and all that stuff. And I'll also go over rising action. Uh, another thing I brought up last time was the, the exercise thing. And I will be doing that because all of you seem very hype and you better stay hype when there's actual homework because 
I know that once there's actual homework, you guys are going to shy away and we're like, mm, maybe next time. So, so for the homework, not going to bring it up now, going to bring it up in its own video on Monday. On Monday, I'm going to make a video describing the homework, right? And it's going to be like, do, 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 do this. And that's basically going to be it. And then the following Monday or the the, the next following Monday, depending on how long, however long it takes you guys to get your homework back to me. Um, I will then do a video breaking down some of the answers that y'all did. And I will then say the next topic and then we'll kind of go from there. It'll just be like, um, take up the questions, give the next homework, and then we'll just keep doing that if it works. If you guys are actually still interested in this. You better be because I might cancel stuff. Uh, what else is there? Um, yeah, on Saturday, we're going to do a live stream. We're probably going to be doing live streams every Saturday. And by every Saturday, I mean every feasible Saturday, because sometimes we do leave the house and we can't do a Saturday thing. We're going to not be doing the Saturday videos because they don't tend to get enough traction in any way. So you know, might as well do something different. Um, so Ursula's going to move down to doing one art topic slash art related video. Um, she's just going to combine those and she's going to keep doing the Sunday vlog because people enjoy those and we enjoy making them. Gets us to actually sit down and work on Nine Point, which is good. A plus in my book. And yeah, we're just going to switch to a streamy thing. And then we're going to do the month... The Monday homework session. Is that like good for all of you? You know, we're still going to have the, the Thursday, Friday videos and the Sunday video and Saturday is a little hit or miss. Maybe um, we'll put videos there some other time if we can't stream, but like no like actual for sure thing. If you're here and you haven't liked what is wrong with you, like um, seriously, I have been rambling forever. You had your chance. Um, could you do that now? If you're not subscribed, that's okay. I don't want to, I don't want to get mad at you again. Um, but maybe you should subscribe or hit the bell. Oh my God. I'm, I'm a YouTuber now. Um, and if you really like us, uh, check out our TickTail store in the description because I can't find anything that's compatible with YouTube that allows me to sell my own things. I'm really sad. You know? It makes me sad. Um, or you can check out Gumroad if you want to just, you know, get an ebook version of The Scourge of Nine Point. And if you don't have money, that's fine. I used to also not have money. Um, it sucks. Uh, I, I sympathize. I empathize. I'm also probably going to do a Discord soon. If y'all are interested in that, pester me about it because I'm like, ooh, things to do, right? Um, now I'm just rambling. Whew.